welcome to the nervous system. Now we're going to look at nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is made of two kinds of cells, neurons and neuroglia. Our neurons are our nerve cells and our neuroglia are the supporting cells. So the glue that holds everything together. The neurons have extreme longevity. So they can last for a long time if in good nutrition. They're largely amiotic, which means they don't divide and they don't reproduce. So there are some exceptions, but generally this is the case, which is a problem because if you have a spinal cord injury or head injury, brain trauma, often these things can't heal. They have a high metabolic rate, which means they need a continuous supply of oxygen and glucose. And generally our neurons have a cell body, dendrites, and an axon. The cell body has a large nucleus and has lots and lots of mitochondria, which are the organelle that creates ATP. The dendrites are short tapering extensions and their job is to receive messages. And then we have axons and each neuron has a single axon and the axon generates nerve impulses and transmits them away. So dendrites receive, then the message goes through the cell body, and then the axons send the message on. And so here we have it. The information only flows in one direction through the neuron. Dendrite, cell body, then through the axon. We've got three main types of neurons. Sensor neurons, and they're in our afferent division of our peripheral nervous system. They receive information from sensory receptors, about monitoring our internal and external environment and then relay that information to the central nervous system. We've got motor neurons. They carry the instructions from the central nervous system to other tissues, organs and organ systems. The, the place they carry this information to, they're called effectors because they cause an effect and they respond by doing something. We have somatic motor neurons which innervate our skeletal muscle and is voluntary, and we have visceral motor neurons, which innervate all the other infectors. So cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, glands, and adipose tissue. Our third type of neuron is an interneuron. So interneurons are association neurons, and they're located entirely in the brain and the spinal cord. So their job is to connect other neurons together. So they're responsible for the distribution of sensory information and the coordination of motor activity. So our interneurons is where all our thinking gets done. Now, our neuroglia, they're our supporting cells. They're literally our nerve glue, and their job is to support, insulate, and protect the delicate neurons. They surround the neurons and hold them in place. They supply nutrients and oxygen to the neurons, and they insulate one neuron from another so signals don't get mixed up and confused. And they also destroy pathogens and remove dead neurons. So we've got six types of supportive scaffolding or neuroglia for our neurons. Um, we've got four in the central nervous system and two in the peripheral nervous system. So our central nervous system neuroglia are astrocytes, microglia, ependymal cells, oligodendrocytes, and our neuroglia in the peripheral nervous system are satellite cells and Schwann cells. So if we look at our astrocytes first, they're our largest and most numerous. They secrete chemicals vital to the maintenance of a blood-brain barrier, and they create the structural framework for the central nervous system. They anchor the neurons to blood capillaries, so they've got a good nutrient supply, and one of their most important roles is to mop up leaked potassium ions and to recapture and recycle neurotransmitters. They also perform repairs in damaged neural tissue. Then we have microglia. These are our smallest neuroglia in the central nervous system, and they're the resident macrophages of the brain and spinal cord. So remember, a macrophage is a cell that comes up and gobbles up other things. So uh, they're phagocytic cells, Phagocyte, phagocytosis, remember that's where the cell wall opens up and a bit of material outside the cell is engulfed inside the cell 
and then it is broken down and destroyed. These cells are derived from white blood cells, and they've got a protective role, such as engulfing cellular waste and pathogen. So they're our microglia. Next, we have ependymal cells. So they're ciliated. Cilia are little hairs on the outside of cells, and they, they move things along the cell wall. So they lie in the central cavities of our brain and spinal cord, and they form a fairly permeable barrier between our cerebrospinal fluid and the tissue. Beating of their cilia helps to circulate the cerebrospinal fluid that cushions the brain and the spinal cord. So talking about cerebrospinal fluid, what that does is it fills up the cavity between the brain and spinal cord, and it's there for buoyancy. Our central nervous system can kind of float in that spinal fluid. We don't have the brain kind of sitting down and resting on itself. It's there for protection. When we get, when we get hit and shook, then we've got our spinal fluid to, to add a little cushioning. It's there for chemical stability and prevention of brain ischemia. So chemical stability, our cerebral spinal fluid flows throughout the inner ventricular system of the brain and is absorbed back into the bloodstream. So it helps to rinse any metabolic waste from our central nervous system through the blood-brain barrier. With prevention of brain ischemia, this is if we have any swelling in our brain, then that could cause decreased blood flow and decreased oxygen. So if we decrease the amount of cerebral spinal fluid, it can accommodate for that to stop the pressure building up in the brain in the short term. Our next neuroglia is oligodendrocytes. So these wrap around neuron fibers to form a myelin sheath. So what a myelin sheath is, is it's lipid rich and it increases the conduction velocity of axons, which means the nerve impulse can go faster along the axon, so our messages reach their destination quicker. And oligodendrocytes are in the central nervous system. Then we have satellite cells. So satellite cells surround and support the neuron cell bodies in our peripheral nervous system. And then we have Schwann cells, which cover every axon outside the central nervous system. So they surround and form myelin sheaths around our large nerve fibers in the peripheral nervous system. So remember our myelin sheath was that insulation along the axon to help the nerve send messages faster.